as well. Welcome here to the podium. And Coach, since you're already here, once you take a seat, just uh, any opening statement or comments you have, and then we'll open it up to questions. Sure. All right, good afternoon. Uh, once again, thank you to the Big Ten Conference for putting on an unbelievable event. We've had a pretty cool day so far, last few hours. Uh, be remiss to not start with thanking Indiana, Scott Dolson, Matty White, Jeremy Gray, uh, for their continued support of our program. We are so proud to be here on behalf of the volleyball program at IU. Feel like we're, uh, we're on our way in so many different respects. Had a great summer. Uh, kids are healthy, very excited to get back in the gym. Wanted to take a second and thank uh, Jay Wilkinson uh, for another generous donation to IU. We, you know, Jay and, and his wife have been so great to, to the volleyball program and now the football program. Again, uh, just wanted to take use this platform to say thank you to him and uh, all he's done for us. Coming off a year we were very proud of. I think we've made some gains and, and certainly gotten to a point where uh, we feel very good about the trajectory of the program. Very proud of my staff, uh, Rachel, Brett, Hal, Kev. Uh, for all their hard work uh, to get us to this point. Recruiting has gone very, very well. Um, Preseason schedule looks challenging and daunting, certainly. Uh, excited to play, uh, go out to California, play UCLA and Washington and Long Beach is a big trip. Uh, finishing up in South Beach against Miami and, and some other very good programs is, uh, is a lot, but I think we're at the point now as a program we want to play good teams and, and see if we can uh, make some moves. So. Again, grateful, I have a lot of gratitude to be here. Uh, very, very excited about the year, incredibly proud of the team and uh, the young women for all their hard work and uh, excited to get going. So with that, we'll take questions. I can get us started, Coach. Um, does it feel like to you this season's a big step forward where you've been kind of on that cusp of getting into the top half and having such a huge jump in wins from year to year and feeling like, hey, this is another season for us to try and make a statement in this conference. And even for the players too, I'll open it up. Yeah, I, I can be quick with that. I think we have too much respect for the league to think that it just naturally keeps going and uh, you go from X number of wins and double them and triple them. I think it, it's about improving. It's about us getting better and doing the work. Um, very proud of where we've come from when I took the job. They had won one match in conference, and I feel like we've come a long way. But uh, as we were saying at dinner and in the car, it's, none of us have really celebrated being eighth at anything in our life. That's really not the, the Super Bowl. It's about trying to keep getting better and keep improving and, and having a ton of respect for the conference. So what do you think, Gray? Um, yeah, I agree. I believe it's, uh, like Coach said, there's never a moment in the conference where uh, we're doubting anybody's abilities. It's always... Um, it's always another opportunity, but it's always a, it's always out of respect. It's it's a, it's a challenge every day. I mean, not just the games. It's the practices. It's the league. It's, um, like the, this conference is just daunting, regardless of what the jersey says. And I think that, um, I mean, we always we want to take the momentum from last year, but just because we win something last year doesn't mean it's going to be the exact same this year. And I believe that. The big wins that we did have last year that had a lot of influence. I think those teams are going to take us. They're going to. They're going to be a little bit more prepared. They're going to take us a lot more seriously. And I think we should. Um, I think we should be prepared for that. And I think that it, this whole new season is going to be um, just a great opportunity to see how we can continue with the momentum from last year, but never take anything for granted. Pete Ferry, Big Ten Plus, uh, for the players. You mentioned, Coach, already the non-conference schedule. Um, not. It's not an easy schedule by any means, but one of the challenging parts, it seems, is the travel. So how are the two of you going to adjust not only for the preparation of the games themselves, coast to coast, but the travel and still being you know, a student athlete? Um, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but I think we've had a lot of opportunities to overcome that. We went on our Europe trip last year and we were playing matches the very next day. So it's adjusting to that time frame. It's going to Rutgers, adjusting to the travel there. It's our schedule allows us to adapt to it, and so that being in the preseason will help us with the conference schedule as well. Um, I don't think I would ever be as successful as a student athlete with the travel and um, all of it without the help of the program. I mean, the Indiana University, I, I couldn't be more grateful for the resources and the people in the program. Uh, there is never a moment where I don't 
where we as a program have don't have access to people who are willing to give their time, energy, and support into us. And I mean, there it couldn't be a better setup to face these challenges coast to coast, time time changes, time travel. Like it feels like time travel at this point. <laughs> I mean, it's like we're East Coast one day, West Coast the next, and then right back into the Midwest. It's a it's a battle, but I could not ask for a better program to support us through each and every part of it. Part of growing up too with the program, we're starting to, you know, we'll we'll charter a flight to, to Miami, and we're we've we've made some big strides in terms of how we're trying to support the student athletes. And again, it goes back to my opening statement about being grateful. Uh, you know, Scott Dolson and company, they value it. They understand that the sport's a very important sport in the conference. They know the teams that we have to compete against and, and uh, the resources from where we play to how we travel, to where we stay, to how they get their fuel. Um, very few programs in the country have it as good and I feel like that's a huge part when it comes to recruiting and developing talent that you know we're at least at the situation now where we're doing things amongst the best in the country and hopefully that the results will start to come with that. Uh, Bremen Kesey with um, Bucky's fifth quarter. This is for uh, Cameron, obviously to be named to the you know Big Ten uh, preseason honors after a good you know solid season last year, getting honors. Then um, does that change like you know you think of maybe perception of the team of Indiana or just your preparation at all or how you kind of guess kind of looking to continue to improve even while hitting kind of those uh, kinds of milestones? Uh, I really owe it all to my team. They've really helped me going in with me in the gym, tossing me balls, all of that. And they're the ones who have really helped me with this. They're the ones who put the ball down. They're the one who give me the ball. I can't do my job if they can't do theirs. So I really owe it all to them. Ethan Casales, Dignity Volleyball. Cameron, what advice do you have for younger setters on what it takes to succeed, especially in a conference like the Big Ten? As we've kind of started camp season, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of young setters. And it's normally about confidence. They lack a lot of confidence, and that's definitely something I lacked. And so as I've gotten older, that's something that has definitely grown, and I think that's definitely helped me with my play. Coach, where do you feel like is the next step for Cameron after such a, a huge year for her and, and first team honors last year? Yeah, I mean, Cam won't say it out loud, but when she finished up her club career, she didn't set and she didn't serve. You know, she's become one of the premier servers in the country, and I think she's a very skilled setter. She'll also tell you that she's got a long way to go. There's a lot of stuff that she's still figuring out, and she's on the early chapters of a pretty good book. Um, I, I, I think she, the, the sky's the limit. I think she's going to be a, a phenomenal collegiate player. I think she'll be a phenomenal pro. I think she's, uh, her habits are good. Um, and what's most important, what warms my heart the most is, is how she nailed it. You, you can't do anything in this sport without good help. We've got phenomenal kids who handle the ball. We've got some big time arms. Uh, we've got kids who come early and stay late and they care. Um, and becoming a good setter has a lot to do with the people getting you the ball and the people taking care of the third touch. So she's grateful, a uh, great teammate, becoming a good leader. And um, yeah, I expect her to keep the trajectory uh, going to where she'll end up helping us get to where we need to get to. Coach, you had mentioned um, how you know pre you know, last year you had a good season, wanted to build on that, and nobody dreams of finishing eighth, sort of in the conference. Um, what then would you say are the expectations for the program this year, and kind of the building steps to keep moving forward? Yeah, I think I think I've been asked that plenty. I think the hard part is is that any of the teams that are in front of us are phenomenal. There's teams that are preseason ranked tenth that have been in final fours. I mean, there, you know. Indiana as a program had a phenomenal year in 2010. They made a sweet 16. Um, it's been a while since we've been a team, I think, that the conference looks at or identifies and says, this is a problem. Like This is a group that we're going to have to play great to beat. I think that's what we're focusing on. I think we're becoming older and more mature. We're, we're, we've got to become less, uh, less high error from the end line and certainly offensively. And if we can keep doing those things, we become tougher and tougher to play against. And really, that's and the girls will tell you this that's all we talk about you know we'll, we'll be good enough or we won't but we're going to work really hard and I think if you were to poll my colleagues they'd say that Indiana is a team that competes and they play hard every single night and that's the first step I think to getting where we want to go you know it's foolish to be like hey I'd love to be fifth or seventh or ninth the bottom line is we'll be good enough or we won't be but it's not going to be from lack of passion and lack of care and lack of work Coach, how did your experience at Penn State positively influence you, and what are your thoughts on the job Katie Schumacher-Colley has done so far? 
Well, I'll start with the second part of that question. Katie and I are very close. Um, I adore her. I think she's a phenomenal coach. I think we were both raised uh, from the same cloth, so to speak. I think we had a mentor who modeled uh, some of the things I hope or aspire to be. He, he worked incredibly hard. He cared a ton for his players. He was consistent. Um, he had a lot of passion and a lot of fire. Um, so, so obviously that's a, that's a big part of it. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of three Final Fours on the men's side. So uh, a lot of the stuff as a player, you know, I, my career, I was, you know, the best player on the team. I was, a, I was cut. I was a starting attacker. I was a libero. I was, I've, you know, all of the emotions that they go through I've kind of felt. So I hope uh, with my staff, with Kevin, with, with Rachel, we've all played at a pretty high level. So we understand what it feels like to be in their shoes. Um, and I think that's what Penn State did for me. I mean, I wouldn't be here without that institution. I have a lot of love for it. Um, it's, a, it's always a hard, it's the hardest match for me during the year when I go back because I consider it home in a lot of ways. Uh, but the best way to respect the place that you, where you grew up is to go there and compete and win. And that's certainly my goal and will be my goal as long as I'm coaching. For the players, um, you, you either get better or you get worse, it seems, a lot of times. And your program has continually taken the strides to get better. And I would feel a lot of that is contributed to the culture that Coach has created. Can the two of you as players speak to that culture that he's created to allow the improvements year after year? Coach has kind of set out a layout for us. So you you come in, you say late, like early, late, everything, you're there. And I think our team has finally adapted to that. Everybody's in early, everybody stays late. We work hard for each other. And growth isn't linear. So you might think that someone has gotten worse, but maybe they plateaued, maybe they took a little bit of a dip, but they're probably working on something to help get get back up on that up. So I think a lot of the times that's that might be what you see, but we might be working on something behind the curtain. Um, I think there's been a lot of emphasis on building a culture and like this making something into our like making something of our program that it wasn't before but I don't think that it was something that was forced I think it was something that was expected it was something that was required and it was uh, like not required in a sense that you have to do it or you're kicked out it was something that when when coach is recruiting obviously he's doing his his best and his job like and there's no doubt in my mind that the people that are coming in are just of that nature that nature isn't something hey you need to do this it's it's already there it's in the dna it's the fight it's the born this way kind of um kind of edge in a player that um that has been cultivating what we want our program to be it's not something that's that hey let's be grateful let's be whatever it's natural our players in our program are just kind they're the kind to the core it's the kind of people that you want to be around especially off the court if not off the court more than on the court it's it's the culture of we want to stay in it's uh, it's intrinsic to be in early to be to be staying late it's not the kind of oh i'm staying late just because i have to it's because i want to and we have something to do we have we have plans for the season and this is the requirement for us to get there and be where we want to be to continue moving this program forward i was told pretty early you're a good coach if you got good players and uh, you know, I, I texted them this summer. Um, they were they were in. They were in at camps. They were working their workout. They're doing what they need to do. And I just told them, I'm so proud of what you guys are building. And that was the first time since I've been at IU that I had that sentence. It was about what they are doing. It's the locker room. It's the players. It's we're guiding the ship now. It's not about hey, this is how it works. So what I'm so proud of about IU is we've able we've been able, and I hope they'd agree to try to eliminate any distraction and give them everything they need to be successful, and then they just go to work. Um, and that's what makes it fun to be around, is you've got a group of kids who, they care deeply, they love the school, um, they care about each other, and they wanna win for each other. And I think that's, going back to my Penn State days and my Coach Rose days, that's, it's always about the locker room. And the locker room has finally figured it out, and I think that's what's gonna make this season fun. More question for Coach about leading the Big Ten last year in aces per set, and how much of that is a focus for you, and, and finding those ways to get points, and the kind of work that went into leading the conference in that category, and the importance of it. Yeah, we've recruited players based on that skill. I think, um, as you guys see, we're in the air a lot. We're very, very, you know, at times we're very high risk reward from the end line, but my philosophy is that 
I want to set the tone. I want it to be um, kind of the characteristic or the trait of our program is to be very aggressive from the end line. I think also we're not as good as some of the teams that we're playing, so we have to be a little bit more high error, high risk from the end line. And there's times where when we get it rolling, we are frightening. Um, what, what's happening now, though, is that those players that are pretty high error are becoming more skilled, uh, more mature, more inside their game. Um, and I would expect or hope that we will be one of the best serving teams in the Big Ten, if not the country. It's something we talk about, we train about. It's going to be a focus. And, you know, errors happen. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's part of the game. But aces are also things that happen too. So if we, uh, if we toss it and bang it and see what happens, I'm okay with that half the time. So. What is that like for the two of you when you have that kind of focus from your coach? I think it's really nice to have, like he has a lot of confidence in the three or four of us who do that top spin serve. And so it's just nice to know that our teammates and our coaches have our back when we're trying to do something a little more aggressive and might make a mistake. I think it goes back to the culture that we were building. I mean, we, you think of, um, the moments where we have a top spinner at the back and we, we just need to rip one. And they, they're no longer do, are the days of, oh, I hope she makes it in. It's, I hope she doesn't hurt someone. Hmm. I mean, like, we are just so supportive of each other. And I mean, we've gotten to the point with our program where it's we only, we only support each other. Your success is my success. Like, your hard work is our hard work. And it just feeds. And I think the reciprocated energy of um, just that unconditional support of somebody getting back there into the end line and just letting it rip. I mean, it, there's nothing better than the feeling of, I mean, whether you're serving or it's your teammate serving and getting the ace or whatever it is, it's just unmatched. And I think that support is um, not only just from my teammates, from the coaches and the whole program as well. It's just you wouldn't want to be in that spot with any other kind of support. Cameron, Lincoln Arneal with the volleyballmag.com. You're one of the few people that – are back this year from last year. What's been the experience like this year, and what does it mean to have another event just about volleyball, just about promoting the sport? It's very, very cool, especially growing up. Like I had an older sister who played volleyball, and her experiences were very, very different. So this is something that I like. I get to share with a lot of different people. So it's just very something unique that I'm glad I had the opportunity to be a part of. Stephen, we talked earlier this spring. I mean, health was a kind of a concern. You're hobble a little bit. How are you feeling now as you're about to start fall practice and everyone get everyone back to hopefully full health? Yeah, it's it's on my mind a lot. I think we, we've got some talent. I think we've got more depth than I've ever had uh, as a head coach. So I'm excited about that. I think I'm looking at the preseason differently uh, to tr how we're going to train and how we're going to go about that. I've spent a lot of time with my staff trying to map out what we want to do, a huge focus on recovery. Uh, now that the team's a little bit older, I think some of the systems some of the things that I want to do, I think we've got a good feel for. So now it's about trying to be as healthy as possible for the opener. And, um, you know, and I think we're almost there. I think a lot of the girls stayed the whole summer. A lot of them are working really hard in the weight room. I wouldn't say we're all the way there yet, but we're getting much closer to what I think you need to be really relevant in the conference. Um, and they've taken care of themselves. I think the group's in pretty good health, and, and we're excited to get going on, uh, on Tuesday morning. Any more questions for the Hoosiers? All right. Thank cool. you guys so Thank much. Thank you, guys. Good Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you.